Hello and welcome to Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Gikon. The Union Finance and Corporate Affairs Minister Nirmala Sitaraman inaugurated the Naglan Corporate Social Responsibility and Investment Conclave 2022 at NBCC Convention Center in Kohima. She also launched several projects under CSR by various companies and later inaugurated the exhibition stalls. Later, Sitaraman also had a special session with CEOs and CXOs. Speaking at a program, Chief Minister Nipirio said that this conclave would not have been possible without a personal interest and support of Nirmala Sitarman, Union Finance and Corporate Affairs Minister. He thanked the Government of India for bringing greater focus on development of the northeastern region of the country. Rio said, not only the government but also the private sector is looking at the northeast with a fresh perspective. The mandatory requirement of spending for corporate social responsibility by companies has opened up immense opportunities for companies to participate in grassroots development activities while not losing sight of their business commitments. However, Nagaland has not been on the radar of the corporates and the amounts spent in Nagaland have remained very low. We are very grateful to the government of India for bringing greater focus on development of the northeastern region of the country. As a result, not only the government, but also the private sector is looking at the northeast, spending for corporate social responsibility by companies has opened up immense opportunities for companies to participate in grassroots development activities while not losing sight of their business commitments. However, Nagaland has not been on the radar of the corporates and the amount spent in Nagaland had remained very low. As many of you may be aware, Nagaland is a tribal state with a unique history and tradition. And the rich social capitals are the core strength of Naga society. From this tradition have flowed the concept of Village Council and Village Development Board. Sanjay Malhotra, Secretary, Department of Financial Services, Government of India, also addressed the gathering. Investment and Development Authority of Nagaland, Chief Executive Officer Alam Demshi Jamir delivered welcome remarks. Nagaland's Chief Secretary, J. Alam, talked on the business economy and social environment, a state overview, while YouthNet founder Hegani Jagalu shared experience of doing CSR in Nagaland. R. Dinesh, President-designate of Confederation of Indian Industry, talked on industry perspective, while North Eastern Council Secretary K. Moses Chalai highlighted the North East regional perspective. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman today inaugurated CSR and investment event at NBCC Convention Center at Kohima. While addressing the conference, the Union Minister shared on how Nagaland has taken the step by organizing the conclave and a single call from the Chief Minister has drawn immense response. Sitaraman said that healthcare seemed to draw a lot of interest, which is good for the people of Nagaland. She also said that organic products are a demand across the globe and Nagaland is sitting with a wealth of organic products. She called for one district, one product and also emphasized on the importance of branding. On the need to encourage science and technology, the finance minister said that Nagaland schools should have Niti Ayok's adult tinkering labs. Sitaraman also encouraged tourism departments to focus on homestays. Nagaland doesn't get enough CSR. Nagaland is not drawing investors, was what the chief minister's observations were when he came to meet me in March and to speak about his concern. Today, I didn't disagree with him then, but I want to highlight today, 
just that one call of the chief minister to hold a CSR and an investor's conclave in Nagaland has drawn this entire business leadership to Nagaland. It is just one call, just that one call from the chief minister. It was an anxious voice then, and I don't want that anxious voice to be heard again. It was, sir, your one singular call for drawing the attention of industry to say that Nagaland should be your natural choice and that is why you have naturally Nagaland as your, you know, very nicely coined. It does take a bit of effort. There is no doubt about it. And that little effort from the side of the chief minister is seeing this response today. It can even be better. I'm not denying that. But a response nevertheless. I therefore want to highlight the fact that Calls for CSR will have to have some reality check as well. I heard the young entrepreneur who spoke, the lady who spoke well when the uh, program started. Can it not be made mandatory? For which we have given an answer in the parliament. She also went a bit further to say, if the government thinks nothing can be beyond its powers, to make it mandatory. The Nagaland Olympic and Paralympic Games 2022 kicked off today at the Capital Cultural Hall in Kohima with Nagaland Chief Minister and President of the Nagaland Olympic Association, Nipirio, as the chief guest. Addressing the ceremony, Rio said today is a red letter day for the state of Nagaland. He said the Nagaland Olympic will promote and foster in sports and promote unity and oneness among the Naga people. He re referred to the inclusion of para Olympic in the Games, which is intended for differently able persons. Today is a red letter day in the history of Nagaland. As we inaugurate the first Nagaland State uh, Olympic Associations and Youth Resources and Sport, in today's world, how much the sports plays in the world. Today, games and sports are not regarded as a mere entertainment or a pastime. As you are aware, from ages, this sports platform and the arena where the states and the nations vie for fame, honor, and dominates the world. And it indicates the country who won most medals. The Nagaland Olympic Association informed that there was a tremendous response from all the districts of the state. It is said to have received about 1,894 participants from 16 districts who registered for the Games. 1,615 are said to be athletes, while 279 are team managers and coaches. Nagaland's first official Paralympic Games will also commence on August 23 at Vitya Pawan Higher Secondary School at Nagarjan in Dimapur. 
The sports disciplines will consist of poji, judo and shot put. It will be a one-day event. A total of 65 athletes, organizers and officials will be part of the Games. The Nagaland Olympic will take place in three venues starting from today. Long Leng Badminton, Dimapur Lone Tennis and Shooting Sports and in Kohima Archery, Athletics, Boxing, Basketball, Football, Table Tennis, Taekwondo and Wushu. A total of 48 officials will join the contingents of each district as Chief D Mission, Deputy Chief D Mission and District Team Manager and 200 qualified technical officials along with 100 volunteers will be involved in the Games. In total, the Nagaland Olympic and Paralympic Games will involve a total of more than 2,800 athletes, officials, organizers, performers and crews. The Hurong Village Students Union of Hurong Village in Gipri District today demanded immediate action against errant teachers at Hurong Village's government middle school. In a letter to the Subdivision Education Office of Gipri, the union demanded action against two teachers who the union allegedly found irresponsible and absent from their duties. In its meeting today with the DEO of Kipri, the union also questioned the integrity of the DEO in matters relating to the special leave granted to the teachers allegedly without proper verification of the situation. The union warned of an own course of action if the demand for action against the teachers is not met. Five models from Nagaland are all set to represent the state in the Mr. and Miss India Globe Season 9, which will be held at Jodhpur, Rajasthan. Let's have a look at the details. Amigan, Mr. and Miss India Globe Queen, that represent Guru Lese. So, Mohan Pass June, we are five of us. So, uh, from August 25 to 28, the competition is going to be held in Jodhpur, the blue city in Rajasthan. Abnigan it to key sub the kinega huina to select Krigina with a Nagaland represent Krula. Actually Nagaland Mega Entertainment Do Mohando Itu Mala second season the Nagaland Mr. and Miss Mega Model Han Guna Horse Kure. To it horse Krigina, it will a winner soap to Iwo Parana because we have divided Kigane next Monday I wrote India next top model ISA. To Kunba half that it jawless because we are collaborating with uh top model India also and then yeah the it do Red Wings production going on. India Globe and Lotpi collaborate going on. So, this is the past June Jawole. So, in India, Kurina, the winners will get Mando sub the direct entry. So, Mala Mega Model Han Han do na. It do collaborate with the direct entry. So, in India, Kurina do tahan do. The winners will get a cash prize. Our tahan international trip free crew or Mrs. India Globe Bangkok the tahan jury members is navy jawo. In India, so. So, I think I say the Miss P I say Miss Kanoti be. Ah, uh, that's why experience be kini ka kuri ke na ayase, and then apne wan Nagaland represent kuri ke na Jodhpur the jawul ayase. To apne laga expectation aro kini ka lagya se. As for me, um, I'm very excited to represent our own Nagaland, and also proud for me and my friends, and also very thankful to our president Sir Sam for giving a, us an opportunity, and also leading us in in our further and guiding us national level the jawla se kinega lagi ase feeling so great to be going and representing representing our own state my expectation is very high so i guess we'll meet the expectation yeah thank you to itia nagaland mega entertainment groups to past jun dagan itu nagaland represent kuina jodhpur te jawla se aro Hopefully, Mogan be so Mano Nagaland can be to pray Korea say, Moganaga states Laganam, Utai Digina, Gitigina, Ayule. Moyadon Iri with camera person Catoleno for Hornbill TV, Dimabu. Sam Chief Minister Himanda Biswa Sarma said the state government will issue standard operating procedure for Majids, the curb imams coming from outside the state. He said in the last 10 days, three imams have been arrested for having jihadi links. The Chief Minister also informed that one of six Bangladeshi nationals who entered Assam to spread jihadi have been arrested and five are absconding. Sarma further said that the government is making a bottle for imams coming from outside states to register. Assam, two days ago, we had a lot of
दो इम्पोर्टेंट जेहादी का साथ जो लिंक है दो व्यक्ति को अरेस्ट किया हूँ एक व्यक्ति एक मस्जिद में इमाम का काम कर रहा था लेकिन ही वॉज ए किंग पिन कोई तरफ का उन्होंने नेटवर्क एक्सपांड किया था आसाम में आया था जेहादी नेटवर्क फैलाने के लिए एक गिरफ्तार हुआ है पास अभी भी गिरफ्तार नहीं हुआ है सो ये मुहिम थोड़ा चलेगा हमारा जो मुसलमान समाज है थोड़ा सा धर्म का ऊपर आस्था ज़्यादा होता है तो कोई भी आके बोलता है हम बहुत ज़्यादा अच्छा से इमामती करूँगा उन लोग को ले लिया जाता है तो उसमें लोगों का दोष नहीं है लेकिन अभी हमने कुछ एस ओ पी बनाए हो कि कोई अगर आपका गांव में इमाम आते हैं और आप उनको नहीं जानते हैं तो थाना को इन्फॉर्म कीजिए थाना वेरीफाई कर लेगा उसका बात इसको रखिए Farmers from across the states arrived at Delhi's Chandar Mandar on Monday early morning protesting over unemployment. Meanwhile, the Delhi police also detained some farmers and have increased the security on all the borders amid the protest. As per the information, Delhi police has detained some farmers protesting at Kazibur on the Delhi UB border. Meanwhile, the traffic situation in the city witnessed disruption as police put up checkpoints at the borders resulting in a traffic pileup. Traffic movement slowed down at the Noita Delhi Chila border as security is heightened at the border entry points. Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia on Monday alleged that he had received an offer for by the Bharti Janda Party to split the Amatme Party in what he claims was a quid pro quo as the CBI initiated a prop into the Delhi's now withdrawn excise policy. In a tweet today, Sisodia wrote in Hindi he has received an offer by the BJP to join them by splitting the AAP in return for getting the cases of CBI and ED against him closed. His reply to the BJP is that he is a des descendant of Maharan Nabratap, a Rajput, and he will cut off his head but will not bow down to the corrupt and those who conspire, Sisodia tweeted. All the cases against him are false, he said it, adding that they can do what they want to do. The IG of the BSF CIOPS Dinesh Singh Rawat and Sonam Chering, commandant of the 29th BSF and officials, visited the family members of SI Pauntin Sat Guide on August 21, who was awarded the Kriti Chakra posthumously. During the visit, the sector DIG interacted with his wife, parents and family members and villagers of Mapo Kuki. Let Pautin Sat Guide was born in the family of Dong Chang and Venam Guide of Mapo Kuki village, Kangbokpi district, Manipur on October 26, 1994. On December 1, 2020, an ambush party led by Pautin Sat Guide came under attack from the Pakistan army. Despite heavy gunfire, the soldier and his team retaliated displaying heroic patriotism till his last breath. The DIG of BSF said the soldier saved the lives of his fellow comrades who were fighting the enemy along with him and foiled the enemy's attempts at infiltration. During the heavy exchange of fire, he was hit. Pautin said guide was awarded the Indian military Decoration Kirti Chakra posthumously during the 2022 Independence Day celebrations, the BSF official said. A joint visit program of NABARD Mumbai, JK Trust Mumbai and Department of Technical Education and Polytechnic Koima held a program for employment-linked skilled training today at Polytechnic Conference Hall in Kohima. Speaking at the program, Advisor for Technical Education and Election, Meto Yoka congratulated the NAPART Mumbai and JK Trust Mumbai for coming up to support the initiatives. He said that with sincere commitment, it will create conducive environment for human resources, advancement and upgradation of skills of talents. Yoka further called upon the officers of the department to come forward and extend support so that through this initiative, it will build the society and see the bright light of the day ahead. With a sincere commitment, with, the, with the commitment, the zeal to create a conducive environment for human resource advancement, upgradation of skills and talents, slowly now, different institutes, the banks and the corporates from the mainland India are 
ready to come over and invest and give us the most important thing that is the handhold support. And today, I can assure and I can say with confidence that I think this is one of the first of its kind, our first of, of its kind, an initiative that is happening with a multinational company, a recruited company, and that has all been so strongly supported without any precondition by the major viable by a brand financial institute in the form of NABAR. The two of you coming together and we as a state and as a small department we're trying to give you the platform for where we can start I think the three coming together is awesome and wonderful. Rampadnagar CEO JK Trust said this is just the beginning and through this industry forum it will share the experiences with lots of industries partners. He also said the program will be get benefit and will bring the changes to generate employment. Also speaking at the program, KV Deputy Managing Director Napart Mumbai said training is being conducted to reduce unemployment. As was told from here, that NABAR is uh, related to agri and rural development. So when we talk about agri and rural development, in fact, when we see agriculture, we want to uh, reduce the dependence of people on agriculture. That's what first we are, because too many people are engaged in agricultural activities in terms of disguised unemployment, disguised employment, because no other opportunities are available. So actually we want to take people away from agriculture. It's just the beginning and I hope we will use our forum, industry forums, to share our experiences with a lot of industry partners. And if I firmly believe I have been, you know, my first experience in Nagaland and I was amazed with the speed and the cooperation support we have been getting here. Influential ultra-nationalist philosopher Alexander Dukin's daughter, Daria Dukin, was killed by a car bomb on the outskirts of Moscow on August 21. Russian authorities said they had opened a murder investigation after the blast. According to the Russian investigative committee, someone planned and ordered the car explosion that killed Daria Dukina, but the plan was not intended to kill her, wherein the target was her father, Alexander Dukin. Taking into account the data already obtained, the investigation believes that the crime was pre-planned and was of an altered nature, the investigative committee said in a statement. Dugina died at the scene after an explosive device presumably installed in the Toyota Land Cruiser went off on a public road and the car caught fire at around 9 p.m. near the village of Polshe Vyazami on August 21. According to the press service of the Russian Investigative Committee, as reported by the Russian state news agency TASS, Dugina's father is a Russian author and ideologue credited with being the architect of spiritual guide to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Both Dugin and his daughter have been sanctioned by the United States. The United Kingdom sanctioned Dugina in July for being a frequent and high-profile contributor of disinformation in relation to Ukraine and the Russian invasion of Ukraine on various online platforms. Alexander Dugin was taken to hospital after his daughter, Daria Dugina, 35, was ripped to pieces in an alleged assassination attempt on his life. He was traveling on a highway near the village of Polshie Vyazamui, just outside the capital but decided to travel in a different car to his daughter, avoiding that only by chance. There are growing fears in Moscow that the attack on Putin loyalist Alexander Dugin's daughter, Daria Dugina, on Saturday night was conducted by Putin's own loyal agents amid rumors that they want to oust the Russian leader from power. Frustration and anger is mounting over Russia's war in Ukraine, with one of Putin's former commanders even branding the president a clown who has been outplayed by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. 
Russia has furiously claimed that Dugin had received death threats from Ukrainian nationalists before Dugina was ripped to pieces in an attack believed to be intended for her ultra-nationalist father. But some experts have suggested that it was Putin's FSB spy agency that was behind the attack. On the other hand, Volodymyr Zelensky's government has strongly denied that it was involved in the explosion, adding, we are not a criminal state like the Russian Federation, and even more so, not a terrorist state, a reference to allegations that Putin's force have been committing war crimes since the invasion. That's all for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.